Okay, let's answer the question. And that question is, what is the probability that this little spinner here lands on yellow? Okay, so what's the probability it lands on yellow? And right here we have a circle and this little thing, let's just imagine this is a little spinner type thing, like a clock of a, a hand of a clock and you kind of twirl it around, you spin it, right? And it just kind of goes, it's like those things you see on game shows, you know, it's like, uh, it can kind of stop. So what we're looking to determine is what is the probability that this little spinner here lands on yellow? Now, we've got to study the information that's going on uh, because we have a couple different options, right? So it could land on yellow or it can land on blue, black, and white. And obviously we're dealing with a circle and we're given some interesting information here. And that is how many degrees these little sectors are, okay? So these are called little sectors, right? This is an arc of a circle, but these are like little slices of, the, of a pie. So here we have 80, and then our blue is obviously bigger, so this is 160 degrees. And then over here we have a black, which is also 80, and then this little white sector, which let's say is 40. So it's not a perfect figure, but um, you know, hopefully this problem is making sense. So we're going to solve this problem in just one second, but first I'm going to quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of Tabba Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. But um, whether you need to take a full course or you need uh, assistance in the course that you're in, my math help programs consist of uh, very, very comprehensive uh, lessons, Okay, much more than what I do on YouTube. And I literally show you how to solve thousands of problems, okay? So, uh, again, this has taken me years to construct and build because, you know, being a math teacher, I know what students really need to successfully learn math, especially more advanced mathematics. Now, one of the things that you need to be doing, uh, irrespective of whether you want to check out my program or not, is uh, if you want to do well in math, you absolutely need to take great math notes. So... Over decades of learning or teaching math, one thing that I've noticed, and it's kind of like my golden rule, is those students who take great math notes almost always have great math grades. And the reverse is true. Those students who don't take any math notes or sloppy math notes or unorganized math notes or maybe your dog ate your homework and your math notes, <laughs> whatever the case might be, um, you kind of get the idea here, right? So if your notes are anything less than outstanding, you need to work on them. And it is a skill. It takes time. I would definitely wasn't a uh, strong note taker. I was terrible even in uh, high school because I really didn't, you know, pay attention. You know, I wasn't interested because uh, I thought to myself, I don't need math. I'm just going to, I'm going in. I went right into the Marine Corps. I wasn't going to college after high school. So I said, eh, what do I need this for? But of course, later on, you know, I went in to go to school and uh, study mathematics. You know, I found out pretty quickly you got to take great math notes. But in the meantime, if you don't have um, great math notes right now, you can get uh, a set of my math notes, okay, very detailed, comprehensive. Those would include pre algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find a link to those in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's get into this problem. Obviously, we're dealing with this uh, topic of probability. And this is just a simple probability uh, problem. Okay, probability is a big topic. And um, so I'm going to kind of quickly review basic, simple probability concepts. And uh, with this particular problem, we're dealing with kind of um, kind of a figure. Okay, so I'm going to talk about this little, little diagram, this little figure here in a second as well, because I want you to be familiar with how to handle these type of basic probability problems. Now, probability... Okay, as a general definition, uh, we kind of write it this way, this little P of E. This, all this means is that the probability of an event occurring, okay? So what does that mean? Well, let's just imagine this thing. Let's say this was a, oh, I don't know, let's say a wall, all right, for lack of a better term. Let's say in some, you know, bedroom of a house, or this is just a wall, and you had this big old, like, yellow circle on the wall, okay, like so. And let's say you're you know, moving out and, okay, and you're like, hey, I, you have your, your darts, okay, you know what a dart is, right, you throw those things and they kind of stick into the wall, <laughs> into a dartboard, right, normally it would be like a dartboard, but let's say you just want to throw a couple darts at this 
wall for whatever reason, okay? And you're standing back and you wanna determine what is the probability that you, when you throw this dart, it will land in the yellow circle, okay? So and the way we determine, okay, a probability is the number of ways that particular event can happen. Okay, so now with the dart, it's a little bit different here because we're like, well, I don't know, this is like area, right? But in general, probability is the number of way, number the number of uh, different ways an event can occur. Okay, just in general, con kind of conceptual manner over the total possible outcomes of events. So here, this is going to be a fraction. Okay, it's going to be some sort of fraction, and the probability is always going to be between zero and one because we're talking about a fraction here, right? So um, where the denominator is one, all right? So our probability we like to express in terms of percent. So the probability of something happening like this um, situation will be between 0% and 100%, okay? So I want to explain this all you know, with this particular problem. Again, just trying to do a quick review of probability concepts. Now, um, so the definition of simple probability is the probability of an event occurring is the number of ways that event can occur over the total possible outcome of events. But in this particular problem, we're dealing with something kind of graphically going on here, right? Like a figure. So let me get back to my little dart problem. So when you have a problem like this, okay, the total possible outcomes is, is what? If I throw this dart and it's going to land on this wall, it can land here, 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 here. It could go, you know, in my little yellow circle here, 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 here. So the total possible outcome is this entire rectangle, okay? But we'd like to um, uh, use area, okay, to represent the total possible outcome when we're looking at something graphically like this. So the entire area of the rectangle in this particular kind of little basic problem would be the entire area of the rectangle, okay? Now... Um, if we want to determine what's the probability that's going to land in this yellow circle, we want to find the area of the circle. Okay, so this is going to uh, obviously be less, right? The area of the circle is less than the entire the area of the rectangle. And so what we have here is some sort of fraction. Okay, it's going to be something like, you know, one-fifth, one-third, whatever the case is, one-seventh, 22 over 80. doesn't make a difference. It'll be some sort of fraction, okay, between 0 and 1, okay? And then we want to go ahead and convert that fraction, which will be a decimal, all right, into a percentage. So it's just a basic review of probability here. And if you're kind of lost, well, you know, maybe this problem won't make as much sense to you, but this is pretty, pretty basic stuff. So hopefully I explained it pretty well. Uh, and again, I'm taking time to uh, really emphasize probability, simple probability with kind of figures like this. And, we, and this is a common problem where there's like a rectangle or a circle or like, you know, different um, figures, okay? It's not just a normal kind of word problem. It's something graphically going on. This is how you handle it. All right, so knowing that, let's get to our problem, okay? Now, one of the things that uh, students do is they look at, and math teachers love to do this. They give you a lot of information just to kind of like distract you, okay? Uh, in other words, they, they kind of put in excessive information uh, and you don't need all that information, okay, to solve the problem. So here we have a lot of other additional information. I don't need to know about blue, black, doesn't make a difference. I just need to know about yellow. So from a graphical standpoint, okay, let me go up here because I don't want to mess up that figure here. What we're really trying to do is determine is I want to know the area of the circle, okay? And I would like to know the area of this right here, the area of the yellow uh, sector, okay? So I want to determine these two things. So the spinner, the probability the, uh, that this will land in here will be the area of the yellow divided by the area of the, of the total area of the circle, okay? Now, there's another kind of more simplistic approach we can take to this, but I really want to emphasize this concept of using area or, de or finding area to solve basic probability problems, especially things that are kind of graphically represented. Okay, so here's our spinner. Here's our problem. So let's go ahead and uh, figure out what the total area of the circle is. 
Well, you got to know how to find the area of a circle, and that is our lovely formula, pi r squared. It is the area, the formula for the area of a circle. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. It's something you should know or put into your long-term memory. So uh, to find the area of this circle, I have to go look for more information. That would specifically be the radius. So here it is right here. There's three inches. So pi r squared, that's going to be pi. The radius is three squared, right? Three squared is nine. So this would be nine pi inches squared. But we're talking about probability, so I'm just going to focus on that nine pi. That's the total area of this circle. Now, how do I find the area of this little arc here? I mean, this little sector, this little piece of pi, okay? That uh, represents the yellow portion, okay, of the circle. Well, got to know a little bit about circles. Now, how many degrees are in a circle? Well, this isn't something else you should know. That's 360 degrees total, okay? So this is 80 degrees. The circle is 360 degrees total. So this little sector here represents 80 out of 360 degrees of the circle, okay? Which is the fraction 2 ninths, okay? So this uh, area here will be 2 ninths of the total circle. So I could just take 2 ninths and multiply it by the area of the total circle, and that is 2 pi, okay? All right, so now I know the area. This is the area of the yellow sector. I know the total area of the circle, which is 9 pi. So that's 2 pi, this is the yellow sector, over the total circle, the total, right? So that's uh, 2 pi over 9 pi, or 2 ninths. Okay, when I take 2 divided by 9, you're going to get 0.22222 repeating. Okay, so again, now here, this is our fraction. This is the definition of probability. This is a number between 0 and 1. But as I told you, we like to represent uh, percent as a decimal. So we're going to take our answer and multiply it by 100 or scoot the decimal point over two places to the right. It's the same thing. And that is 22.2%. Okay, so... That is the probability. The probability that the spinner will land here would be 22.2%. Now, some of you out there could say, like, well, I don't need to find the area of the circle. I could just know that um, uh, right here, uh, this represents 80 out of 360, and that would be two nights, and then I could go ahead and convert that to a decimal, and that would be fine, too. Okay, for this particular problem, that would be okay, too. But I wanted to um, stress that in problems like this, where you have a circle and a rectangle or a triangle, okay, things like this is a very common type of uh, uh, probability problems, simple probability problems. You have figures, you have no alternative other than to calculate the area, okay? All right, now, one other thing I wanted to mention on here as well is that you know, some students might be like, okay, I got the yellow, maybe I need to find the pro uh, find the area of all these other little things, those little sectors here too. Remember, a lot of math problems, they'll give you a lot of inf extra information. You got to be very careful on answering math problems because, you know, it's just a kind of a standard thing that math teachers like to do or math test, especially standardized tests. They'll give you additional information that has nothing to do, just extra stuff. Uh, they're really just trying to confuse you, okay? So always read the problem carefully and focus in on what you need and only focus in on what you need. Not Don't kind of disregard extra stuff because that way, you know, you could save time and just get directly to the solution. All right, so hopefully, you know, you got a little quick review here on basic probability. And if you weren't um, familiar with probability, you know, hopefully uh, this video has given you a quick little introduction to the topic. Okay, so if you like this video, certainly will enjoy you smashing that like button. If you're new to my YouTube channel, I definitely love you to, beca uh, to become a subscriber if you like my teaching style. Been on YouTube for many, many years already at the, at the point of this video. Have hundreds of videos that are organized in various playlists on my channel that are there for you. Okay, so whether you need to learn geometry, algebra, more advanced mathematics, uh, likely already cover a lot of those topics, but my best work is going to be uh, my math help program and these other resources that you can find in the description of this video. Okay, so I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.